Hi guys, it's Hazel and it is day 60. Can you believe it? Of the 100 day challenge or project. Um, thanks so much for joining me. And I need to get right to this because I have some paint on my palette and I don't want it to dry up. Okay, so I was looking for ideas to keep, you know, some fresh content going here. And in one of my art books, I came across an idea of using uh, punch outs. So I, the what I have, you know, like bigger punches are is this jigsaw puzzle piece, this postage stamp, this leaf or yeah leaf, and of course circles and this fluted edge um, oval. So what I did was I took a bunch of, whoops, a bunch of cardstock and I uh, cut several, I made little piles of the different shapes just using, um, you know, cardstock, like especially that yellow or that red that I'll probably never use as is. And I made uh, piles of these shapes to work with. And... I, of course, kept the, the, um, the negatives. So this is kind of all at the ready here. Now, in the, um, in the idea that I saw, what they were using as a substrate was watercolor paper. And I thought, well, okay, how about coasters? Now, I have a lot of these kind of coasters. Um... So I picked a couple of those. So then my next step, and I'll show you, I have multiple things happening here. Okay, so this is the coaster. This is a layout of the shapes. Now, um, I, I kind of wanted to be able to show you this in, in, pro, in various stages of development so that um, I don't have to explain it, I guess, or you have to watch me, um, try to, to, to make it happen live without pausing and fast forwarding. So what, um, these coasters are cards, um, what do you call them? What do you call those things? Chipboard, I guess. You know, like the chipboard letters and the chipboard shapes that we get. So if a person wanted... Now, none of this is going to be very thick. But if a person wanted to shave it down, it's easy enough to get your little spatula or craft knife or something into, you know, between the layers and just peel off. Uh, like you don't want to go too thin because then, of course, this loses its stability. So that's what I wanted to show you there. So to move things along, I've glued this down. And I'll show you the next step soon. But again, my paint is possibly drying. And I hope my brush is drying too because um, dry brushing is the technique. So then uh, the, the, um, the suggestion was to well paint it all over so of course you can see that i i have some um depending on the color of the square i have either better or worse coverage i didn't gesso or anything to begin with you can see the butt end of that rain uh, reindeer um so that so you start with your darkest color so that's that then you go you dry brush a lighter color over it so that is what i have here now these are old colors. My first, my bottom layer was burnt umber. My second layer is Georgia clay, and I would be very surprised if any, if well, I mean burnt umber is hundreds of years old, but um, I don't know if Georgia clay still exists. Plus, you know, naturally you'd want to pick the colors that work for you. So I just barely have dipped my. Uh, brush into I just got the tips of the Brussels Brussels the Brussels sprouts I just have the tips of the um, bristles um, with a bit of paint on them and I'm going to very lightly 
Is the paint starting to skim over already? Sort of dry brush some color on here. And I'm turning the the um, the coast. Whoa! I'm so sorry. Long handled brush. I'm turning the coaster but I'm keeping my strokes going in the same direction. But again, you know, that's that's just what I'm doing. You could do maybe you wanted to cross hatch effect or something. Whoa, that's a big blob of color there. Let me see if I can spread that out. Again, this is only layer two. Yikes, I don't like that. Now, if necessary, I guess I could pull out my um, heat gun, but I'll set that aside. And actually, I should... I'm going to move all my shapes over and out of view because I need to be able to spread out a bit here. So um, let me, I don't think I'm going to try it. I'm not going to wash this brush simply because then my brush will be wet and it'll sort of dilute the, the color. But I'll show you what I did with this. Um, at this stage. So I've got my shapes on there and and the idea is you can see that as you layer things and I've used both the um, negative as well as the positive shapes. So well these are all positive. This one has a couple negatives on there. So that of course creates the layers. So I'm going to um, spritz a little paint on here directly. And again, you can probably see that the it colors some parts of it better than others, but that isn't going to matter in the end. Another little dollop. And this acrylic paint, as we know, dries quickly, relatively quickly. Just trying to get in the little sort of areas where there is a an elevation change. The nice thing about being able to put your paint straight on the thing you're painting is that you don't end up with a puddle like that that is going to dry and be wasted. I guess it depends depends how quickly this dries. If um now, I didn't really go around the edge. I suppose I could have. But anyway, depending on how quickly this dries, I might be able to still get a few, a bit of that color. Now, I am going to have to um, wash this brush out. And I have a lot of these kinds of brushes. I should actually, for doing stuff like this, uh, for a video, I should actually have a couple uh, um, can I, oh. hmm. Anyway, I guess lesson learned. Have a few more brushes on hand and then I can keep one dryer. Okay, so while this um, brown, this burnt umber is, dry, is drying, let me show you how I figured out a layout. So that's what the thing looks like. Now, this is the negative 
of this three inch circle that I used on this one. So I'm not gonna let this go to waste. So base, oh, here it is, art glitter glue. Now what I did, I figured out where on here I wanted to be placed and I traced around it. But I also thought, well, let me, let me do the gluing in front of you and see, maybe talk you through the, what my thought process was. And of course I will trim whatever goes beyond. Now maybe it would be simpler if I did it from this side. Okay, how did I have this? Yeah, like so. Because of course the coaster is not square. So I've got it flush at that side. And as you can see, I didn't, like I said, I didn't do any prep to the coaster itself. Um, am I going to be able to do this with scissors? Yes, I guess so. So I think that, you know, it's like anything else. The more a person plays around with these things, the more ideas that you, the more ideas you get. So I have these, these leafy shapes. So basically all I thought I would do is sort of something really graphic like that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue those down. And of course, there's going to be a bit of overlap. Um, and that is what is ultimately going to give us that, that really cool finished look. Now, I'm not entirely sure. I have other paint assembled here. I'm not absolutely sure how many other coats these guys will get but I I will end with a metallic I've got a couple metallics I've got this metallic uh, taupe and also the old spun gold so I'll see how things are going but you get progressively lighter with each coat Again, these could be, I'm just creating some, some overlap to create some interesting dimension. Now, if I wanted to, I could have this, let's be sure that you can see something. I could have this, you know, the stem of this extend beyond the edge of the page. Do I want that? Maybe just a, a titch simply because I don't want to create a, a place of vulnerability. So it will, I mean, it'll get stronger as it has layers of paint on it, but it will also still just be paper. So I don't want it to become, you know, something that gets ripped off or damaged or whatever. I guess if that were the case, it could be cut off flush with the edge, but I think it will look more attractive if it just bleeds off. Okay, so we'll let that be. Now is this dry enough I would say yeah I'm going to try this because again I don't want to waste the paint if I can help it so 
So again, just a feather light touch. Sorry, did I hit you again? You know, with these colors, and I don't know how well it's coming across at your end, but it almost it almost looks like rusty metal, which of course is a lovely uh, look in my opinion. Okay, I think I'm going to leave that. And of course, with these dry brushed uh, layers, it's going to dry even quicker than before. Um, I wonder if I can get most of this color off with this wet wipe, then I won't have to dip the brush and risk. Mind you, I'm wetting it a bit with this wipe, so maybe I haven't saved anything here. Okay, I think, so I've got the taupe, I've got this peaches and cream. Hmm, and I have this. Okay, I'm going to try. Oh, is this one almost empty? I basically, you know, I have a, oh, kind of thin. I basically have a, a little plastic basket off. I wonder if this is going to be. Oh, you know what? It's probably that texture because it's got the metallic in it. Um, oh, I was saying that I have uh, this plastic basket with some really old paint that I'm trying to either use up if it's still, you know, <laughs> pourable and whatever, versus... Uh, or decide once and for all that it's had its day and then just chuck it out. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to leave that like that. Um, maybe I could use a little few more strokes here. can still see the reindeer's legs. Now on this one, I'm going to try this peach. Now these things are nearly empty which pleases me because that means now of course there's cross pollination happening because I'm not washing the brush in between sorry guys oh see look how nice that is Maybe I want to turn it over so that I don't always have my first uh, contact with um, with the surface at the same end. Oh, I like that. But then I'm a sucker for for texture. And see, when I keep going over it, I'm, there's even more emphasis on those leaves. Like it. And you can see how little, how very little paint I used. Okay, because I like that probably more than this one, I'm going to continue using this color. Oh, too much. Too much, too much. Oh, blotting it on there isn't a bad technique either. Should we just continue doing that? This is just a dinner napkin. This, quite often I'm... Um, oh, what if I... Well, am I going to worry about that? 
those kind of um, coasters show up in thrift stores all the time. I could do it like this with a cloth. See, I'm not so happy with that where I just made contact there. It almost feels like there's, whoa, too much. Like there's um, more control with the napkin. Mind you, I see I'm leaving a bit of lint there too as it debra uh, debrades, degrades, debrades. Where does that thread keep coming from? Yeah, I wish I didn't have, oh, oh, you know what happened? Crap. Um, that, you know, I probably haven't given it enough time to dry. That's down to the paper. Um, uh, I just wanted to see if I can, I don't really want to. Just doing a little repair. Doing, taking back the, uh, knocking back the contrast. And maybe I'll also do, now mind you, we had that Georgia clay in between. But see that, that doesn't look, if you didn't know that what that was, you wouldn't know what that is. <laughs> it just looks like another piece of texture. Which is proof, again, one more time, <laughs> that um, now I feel like, oh, brother, you guys, sorry about this. I feel like that got too light there. Oh, dear. Now it's, it's mixing on my brush. Oh, well, now it just looks like another, this might end up being my favorite one. And again, if, you know, I'm pushing it because... I'm trying to do a video and not keep you here forever. See that? Oh, good. It's lifting some of that. And because I'm not really allowing it to dry perfect, dry and cure, it... Um, I love these things. Now on this one, you notice that I did extend past there. That's That may end up having to be cut off. But that's okay, because it will look as though, I mean, it, it will in fact be true that the design bled off the edge of the page. Boy, if you, if you had a gun to my head and made me pick... I, it's like my kids. I love them all. Um, okay. I'm just wondering if this... This gold could ruin it. Maybe I should give this... Because this is going to be my last layer. So I'm wondering, I maybe just give this a quick little blow with the heat gun. So cover your ears.
I, if you will bear with me for one second, I'm going to go over and try to find my, quickly, find my copper metallic paint. back yeah i think that this was called oh crap <laughs> sorry guys um i think that i just dipped it in the peach i think that copper is going is going to be more attractive with these colors than gold would have been so let me do this one first. And hopefully, this brush is, well, not perfectly dry, but. Okay, now hopefully I don't hit you. Actually, maybe if I did it this way. Let's change things around a bit. So, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm missing the... Okay, I'm going to do this guy first. Maybe I'll just start somewhere other than the top, which is where I always start. I'm not sure why the, the streaks are so wide. Is that because the bristles let me try to fan them out a bit so they don't clump together. Again, that's pretty, pretty wide. Oh, I don't care. Too wide. What will happen if I touch it? Probably too late. It's dried already. Oh, maybe it's lifting. Is it lifting or is it just burnishing what's there? I guess it's lifting. And again, <laughs> lifting is a totally legitimate art technique. It's not the, the, the act of a desperate woman. Honestly, I don't want to touch this one. I'm not going to. I'm in charge of my own stuff. I wonder, but those are round. Sorry, I'm, I'm talking to myself. I'll be back. I didn't realize I had another brush like this and it's perfectly dry. So I should be able to get better, um, Bouncing to get just a wee bit of. Uh, 
and maybe, you know, getting the excess off. So that first touch to the, because I just want a hint of, you know, the metallic. So load and sort of pounce off. Now I suppose another thing I could have tried is going in the opposite direction. That too would have, could have made a difference in the final result. Now I, Not sure about this, people. Let me move this out of the way. Can you see them all? Now, I don't know what you think. But I think I prefer this one the best. And I don't, you know, it's hard to say. This is the only one that has only one shape on it. So all circles, all circles. This has the postage stamps and the vine and the uh, this guy, the, the leaf. This has well, this, uh, yeah, I guess this one has the, um, just the fluted ovals, but it also has the negative, two negative space ones. I mean, they're all, they all have their appeal. But... Yeah, I think I like this one the best because, because it doesn't have the metallic. Although, I don't know. Uh, what, what do I know? I know that I can use all of these. Um, I won't take your time to paint this one, but of course, I would be doing the same thing. Burnt Umber. Georgia Clay. Burnt Umber, Georgia Clay, Peaches and Cream, and then depending how it looks at that point, perhaps the copper. So that is it for today, guys. I hope that if you have some coasters or some larger pieces of um, chipboard, that, you know, you're confused or, you know, stumped as to what to do with them, that you try this idea. Because, of course, we all have scrap paper. We have scrap card stuff. We have punches. We have paint. We have coasters. So why not bring it all together and uh, create something really unique and lovely for, for the journal? Still trying to analyze why this one is. This, um, no, I was going to say this one has the most layers on it. So there's the base, there's the large circle, and then places like this, there are two more. So that's basically four layers. Here we have one, two, three. Maybe that is what makes a difference. There's more distinct. Boy, I'm going to have this, this puzzle solved before. So that's why along here, there's more depth because there are more layers. 
And still, because I've peeled the back off, I think maybe could do one more layer. Um, it is no thicker, and in fact, it's thinner than that first one. So, okay, that's my theory. That's my hypothesis. The more layers, the more um, depth and variation and shadowing and so on that you get. Maybe I need my knife instead of this spatula. Maybe I, how about if I keep poking at this until I ruin it? Does that seem like a plan? This is doing it the hard way. I don't want it so thin that... You know, this would be a nice journal topper. Don't have this even yet. Anyway, okay, I'm letting you go. That is my theory. The more layers, the more interest you get. And of course, maybe you have more interesting punches than I do. So you're going to get a totally different effect. Um, although you do see that even something as basic as a circle can create something really quite lovely. Okay. Boy, I'm getting down to the... This had better be the last layer. I just know that it wasn't... Uh, like this side is thinner than this side, so I had to try to even it out, but... I'm almost at the paper topping, paper. Anyway, you don't, you don't want to see me wreck it, so I'm going to turn off the camera. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.